Okay, so here's the first lesson for chapter 8. Um, chapter 8 is on the trigonometry of acute triangles. Okay, so chapter 7 we worked with right triangles and we used Sokotoa. We used the sine cosine tan ratios to find missing angles and sides. Okay, when we're working with acute triangles, um, we can't use Sokotoa anymore. We can't use those trig ratios. What we can use are um, two laws that we'll learn this chapter, the sine law and the cosine law. Okay, those will help us find missing angles and sides for acute triangles. So this lesson is on section 8.1 using the sine law. Okay, what the sine law is, the sine law um, is right here. Okay, and this is a law that shows the relationship between the sides and the opposite angles in an acute triangle. Okay, so if here's angle A, I know side A is here. Uh, what the law tells me is that the relationship between um, these ratios are all equal. So the ratio of the length of side A divided by the sine of angle A is the exact same as the ratio of side B divided by the sine of angle B, which is also equal to the length of side C divided by the sine of angle C. Okay? The ratio of each side to its opposite angle those ratios are all equivalent. Okay? So sine law, the ratio of each side to its opposite angle is equal. Okay? So A over sine A is equal to um, B divided by sine B, which is equal to C divided by sine of C. Those ratios are all equal. So even though we have, there's three ratios in the sine law, and then you see three parts, you only ever use two parts at a time. Okay? So we might use these two or we might use these two, or we might use these two. Okay? It all depends on what information is given to us. Okay? We're always going to be given three pieces of information and then be asked to solve for a fourth. Okay? So if I'm given um, angle A, side A, side B, and it's asking me to find angle B, I would use these two ratios and I'll build a sub in for side B, side A, angle A, and then solve for angle B. So we can solve any equation that only has one variable. Okay? Let's just go ahead and do a question so you can see how this works. Okay? Well, first of all, let's clarify when you can use the sine law. Okay, sine law can be used in two instances. Instant one, um, it can be used to find an unknown side okay? when two angles and a side are known. So if I know two angles, and a side, I can use the sine law to find um, another side. Okay? Like once again, if you look, I have three pieces of information, I can solve um, for the fourth using two of these ratios. Okay? Um, the second instance when you can use the sine law, you can use it to find an unknown angle right here. If two sides, two sides are known, and the angle opposite one of the known sides. So 32 um, Side 10 is opposite of angle 32, and I have another side, and I want to find an unknown angle. So those are the two cases you can use the sine law. And remember, you use these with acute triangles. Okay? So let's do two examples of finding a side length using the sine law. Okay, so if I want to find the length of side C, okay, so side C is right here. I know it's across from angle C. If I want to find the length of side C, I can use the sine law, because remember, we can use the sine law to find an unknown side. Okay, it's asking us to find a side. When we know two angles, I know two angles, and a side. So I can use the sine law. If this is the sine law, let's just fill in, what, let me just rewrite the sine law here. So I know the ratio of side A over the sine of angle A is equal to the ratio of the length of B over sine of angle B, which is equal to the ratio of side C over the sine of angle C. Okay? That's what the sine law tells us. If you want to see a proof of the sine law, uh, I'd be more than happy to post one. Just request it and I'll post one for you guys to see. Okay? So um, let's just fill in everything we know. So I know this side right here, that's side B, because it's across from angle B. I know that side is 2.5. So I'm going to fill that in. That's 2.5. I know angle B is 62. So I can replace B with 62. Okay, B is 62. 
And I know angle C is 52. Angle C is 52. 52. Okay. Hopefully what you always want to happen is you want to get one ratio where you know both pieces of information, the side and the angle. And then there's going to be another ratio where you only know one of the two pieces of information. Like for this one, I know angle C, but I don't know side C. So if we use these two ratios, I could solve for angle C because I know these ratios are supposed to be equivalent according to the sign law. Okay? So it's asked me to find side C. So I, I know I have to use this ratio in order to be able to find side C. And then I'm going to use this ratio because I have nothing unknown here. I know I know side B and I know angle B. Okay? I know those two. So if I use these two ratios, I have three pieces of information given, one unknown. I can solve for side C. Okay? In this case, I'm not interested in the ratio um, of A over sine of angle A. Okay? I don't know the length of side A. I don't know angle A. I could figure out angle A if I wanted to. I'm subtracting these two from 180. But I have no interest in the length of side A because the question asks me nothing about it. Okay? I want to find the length of side C. I can use these two ratios and solve for that. So let's go ahead and do that. So I know that 22.5 over sine of 62 is equal to C over sine 52. Okay? I have two fractions that are equal to each other. I can get rid of these fractions by cross multiplying. Okay? So multiply these two together and put their product on one side with the equal sign. So I get 2.5 sine 52 is equal to, now I'll do the other um, cross product here. So C times sine 62 and put that on the other side of the equal sign. C sine 62. Okay. Now to get C by itself, I just have to divide sine 62 to the other side. Okay. So I'll get 2.5 sine 52 divided by sine 62 is equal to C. All you do from here, put that in on your calculator. Make sure it's in degree mode. Put this on your calculator. 2.5 sine 52. Make sure you close your bracket. Then divide by sine 62. Close your bracket. Hit equals. 2.2 if I round it to the nearest tenth. So C equals 2.2. Okay, and that's that question done. Okay, let's do another one so you can get the hang of um, figuring out which ratios to use. Okay, so let's take a look at this one here. It's asking me to find the length of side A. Okay, it wants me to find this length here, side A. I've got two angles and a side, so I know I can use the sine law to solve for the unknown side. Okay. This one's going to require a little bit of extra work, <coughs> but instead of just telling you what we have to do, um, I'm going to fill in what we know, and try. we'll try and intuitively see what we have to do here. Okay. So um, I don't know the length of side A, but I know angle A. So I know A over the sine of angle A, which is 54, is equal to the ratio of B. I don't know B over sine of angle B. Angle B is 46. Okay. And that's equal to um, the length of C, which is 11, over sine of angle C. Okay. So if we remember from before, we always need one ratio that has both pieces of information. And in this one you'll see none of these have both pieces of information um, filled in. So there's no two ratios we can choose um, that will only have one piece of missing information. If I choose these two, I'll have two unknowns still. If I choose these two, I'll have two unknowns. And if I choose the one with A and the one with C, there's still two unknowns. So I can't solve for any of those. Okay? So let's just think about this. It's asking me to find the length of side A. I need to eventually be able to find side A. Okay? So I have to eventually use this ratio. Now I have to figure out which other of these ratios can I use with it. Well, both of these have an unknown. 
Um, can I figure out either of these unknowns? Can I figure out the length of side B? No, I can't figure out the length of side B, but I can figure out angle C because I know the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. I know two of the, two of the angles, therefore I can find the third. I know angle C, angle C is equal to 180 minus 46 minus 54. Okay, and that gives me 80 degrees. So I know angle C is 80 degrees. Okay, 80. Good. Now I have a ratio with both pieces of information um, that are that are known. Okay. So if I use that ratio, along with the ratio that has our unknown A involved, okay, if I use these two ratios, I have three known pieces of information and one unknown. So I can solve for that unknown. So let's go ahead and do that. So I know A over sine of 54 equals 11 over sine 80. Get rid of the fractions, I cross multiply. So do A times sine 50, that gives me A sine, oh, sine 80, sorry, A sine 80. Put that on one side of the equal sign, then do the other cross product here. 11 times sine 54 gives me 11 times sine 54, okay? To get A by itself, I'm going to divide the sine 80 to the other side. So 11 sine 54 divided by sine of 80. Put that on your calculator, let the calculator do the work. So I know 11 sine 54, close my bracket. Make sure you close your bracket there. 11 sine 54 divided by sine 80 equals 9.03. Round that to the nearest tenth, it's just 9.0. There's my answer right there. So A is 9.0. So this one required a little bit of extra work. We just had to find angle C first um, by subtracting the other two angles from 180. And that gave us, um, that then gave us a ratio with two pieces of information known. Okay, so then we can combine that with the ratio with one unknown to solve for that one unknown. Okay, let's now see how we 